All right, so in this week's episode of Paint Talk, I'm gonna talk about how you need to change the way you see things to become a better painter. All right, welcome to Paint Talk, the weekly show where I sit, have a cup of coffee, and talk about oil painting. If you're new to the channel, then welcome to Paint Coach. My name is Chris Fornatero, and I'm here to help simplify oil painting so that you can get better faster. All right, so the first way that you need to change the way you see things is composition. If you don't know composition, you need to learn composition because composition is the tool that you're going to use to guide the viewer through the painting in a way that you want them to. It's very relevant to anything that you paint, portraits, landscapes, still lifes, even abstracts. You can have the most beautiful scene painted perfectly, all the right colors and values drawn in perfectly. But if the composition is horrible, that painting's not gonna be that great. And on the inverse, you could actually not do a lot of things very well in a painting, but if it's a very strong composition, the painting could still turn out pretty well. I've actually made a whole video on composition. If you wanna check that out, I'll put a link to where you can watch that above right now. All right, the second thing I wanna talk about is seeing abstract dark and light shapes. One of the first things I do when I look at a subject is break it down into a pattern of light and dark shapes. And I use what I know about composition to arrange those dark and light shapes in an interesting way. It also helps mapping things out and simplifying the process at the beginning. You know, you break down your subject into the light family and the shadow family, and then you can go and find subtle shifts in value and color within those families. Also, just being able to see in terms of light and dark is gonna help you with values. So many times I see students work and their colors are on point, but the value is off. You know, it's too light or it's too dark. Being able to look at a subject and tell what areas are darker and what areas are lighter is gonna make you a better painter. And this is a lot harder than it sounds because a lot of times the change is very subtle and it's very difficult to see and decipher what areas are darker and what areas are lighter. All right, third thing is see without any preconceived notion on things. You know, this is really big with colors. Uh, you know, people have in their mind what color certain things are and they're like, oh, I'm gonna be painting trees, trees are green. Or, you know, water is blue, you know, a skin tone is a certain color. You don't wanna think that way, you wanna be objective and you wanna isolate the color that you're trying to match and then match it. Doing that you will see more and you will discover you know there's more red in those trees than you think there's more green in those skin tones than you think same thing goes for values how light or dark something is a lot of times i will see students paint an area of their painting that's supposed to look very bright with just straight white because they're like oh i gotta make it really bright and white's the brightest and i'm gonna put down some white and most of the time you don't need to use pure white you want to mix in some other color in there and knock it down just a little bit. The thing is doing that is going to influence all the rest of the values in your painting. If you look at a lot of old masters work, you know, they'll paint, you know, somebody in a white shirt in the sunlight and you take a look at the color they use for that white shirt in the sunlight and you're like, wow, that's actually not nearly as white as I probably would have done it. And that's why they're, they're masters. They understand value and how keying in that really bright value a certain way will influence all the other values in the painting. All right, fourth way is see things big to small. You know, this goes for your drawing. When you're first drawing in your subject, see the big shapes first. Don't get caught doing a bunch of little details. You know, if you have a bunch of trees, don't try and, you know, draw in every leaf you see on the tree or even draw in each individual tree that you see. If they're all together, you know, bunch all those trees together and see it as one big shape. Same goes for colors. When you're first starting a painting, you want to start with blocking out big shapes of flat color. It's just gonna make things a lot easier as you move forward. Because then you can go and add on smaller shapes of color into that. You can adjust the color, push it, pull it, lighten it, darken it. But you have to start with something. And it's just good to start with big average colors for these big shapes. You know, when I start a portrait, I'm a lot like a sculptor and I'm just trying to figure out the general shape of the head. And as I go, I start carving things out, but still thinking big to small. I don't immediately go in and try and just carve out the nose perfectly with all the little nostrils. I first just try and think of the planes of the face. You know, the three major planes is the front and then two sides, get that. All right, now I'm gonna go and break down which direction, you know, cheekbones face. You got this jaw here. And as I go on, I, you know, I start carving away smaller and smaller shapes. All right, fifth thing, see things in relation to the whole. Always be 
comparing different areas of your painting. This is how you're gonna dial things in right. When I'm painting, my eyes are constantly bouncing all over the painting, comparing different sections. You know, I'm thinking, you know, oh, this area is darker than that area, but it's still lighter than this area, but that area is lighter than that area. You know, this is cooler than that, that's warmer than this, this has more red in it than that, this is bluer than that. It's like each set of the painting has a series of of dials and knobs and I'm dialing this one up, I'm gonna dial that one. And I'm like, oh, I gotta dial this one to adjust for this one. That's gonna influence this one. I gotta dial the color in here, the value there. And I'm just constantly moving these dials until I get the painting where I want. You know, don't get caught focusing on one small area for too long. You know, always be stepping back every couple minutes. Step away from your painting, you know, five, seven feet away from your painting take it in as a whole you're going to see a lot more that way and you're going to catch a lot of your mistakes when they're little mistakes at the beginning opposed to at the end when they've developed into big mistakes all right number six is increase your observational skills with drawing always be drawing practicing your drawing is going to develop your observational skills and you're just going to get better at being able to see things and then place them accurately on your canvas. You will see an angle, you'll accurately replicate that angle on your canvas. You know, you'll see a spacing between two areas and you'll be able to judge and accurately replicate that spacing on your canvas. You have observational muscles and you always need to be exercising those muscles. Being able to quickly and accurately draw something in is gonna make you such a better painter. And yes, there are tools that you can use to help you get accurate measurements, but honestly, in the end, I feel the most accurate tool is just a well-trained eye. And the only way you're going to train your eye is through practice. So anytime that you trace something, you are missing out on an opportunity to get better at drawing. And you can still use tools that you can use a proportional divider and measurements and you know whatever you need but as time goes on try and use those more as a way to check yourself try and do it on your own first and when it's not right you know use those to check yourself and fix it all right number seven is physically change the way you look at your paintings step back from your painting you know five seven feet even do not want to be so close to your painting that you don't see the whole picture i constantly paint with my arm fully extended i am only worried about how the painting looks from this far away. I don't really care how the painting looks this close up. I care here and you know about five feet back. You know, there's other things that you can do to view your painting differently. Like a lot of times with portraits, I will flip the painting upside down halfway through to give me a fresh look on it so my mind isn't trying to fill in gaps. It helps me see the correct angles and a lot of times when I have a portrait, I'm like, oh, it's just not looking like the person. I don't know exactly what's wrong. I flip it over. It makes it very apparent what is wrong. And I find that I can see the correct shapes, see the correct angles a lot better when it's upside down. All right, and number eight is educate your eyes so you can see more. A lot of people go through painting trying to just paint what they see, which is good. It's just that when you educate yourself, you will be able to see more. I feel like this applies a lot to form. For example, when you know the form of the human head, it's going to make portraits a lot easier. You're going to see a lot more going on because you know the directions of the planes. You know the structure of things. You know how light is going to catch certain areas based off the way they are structured. I always use the example, if somebody was looking up at the clouds, they might not see the shape of those clouds in the form of a giraffe. But if I told them before, hey, do you see the giraffe in the clouds? They're going to be looking for it and they're going to be able to find it easier. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, hit that like button, click that notification bell. And if you wanna see what I am painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero, here telling you to go get painting.